What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode of Mountain Blade Warband. In this episode, we are going to take Vercheg. I'm looking at it right now, and it is nude. It is bared forth beneath me. I can see you, Vercheg. Vercheg sitting in the corner like, no. Yep, that's what Vercheg sounds like in my mouth. Oh my god, please don't. But that's what's going to happen, Vercheg, because you belong to us. You do not belong to Svadia. Let's go ahead and go to the castle, and we need to talk to some people. First and foremost, to make friends, but then the second thing that we want to do here is send everybody off to Vercheg to wipe this thing out. So might I suggest a course of action? I see a fortress which can easily be taken. Wait, what? My relation with King Ragnar is- what? I'm confused. I just lost reputation. I don't know why, but I did. I think you owe me 179 dinars, Mad Dog McGriddle. Do you intend to pay your debt anytime soon? What? Since when do I owe you money? I am really confused right now. Two weird things have happened. Let's talk to another guy. How did I owe him money? I've never seen that ha I've played this game for years and I've never seen that happen ever. Like, at first I thought he was just putting me on. Like, you know when you have that friend who's like, Hey, what about that five bucks you owe me? Ha ha ha. Like, they do like their whole little... <laughs> their little pen and teller just like, I think you owe me five dollars. <laughs> like, it's just like one of those weird... Abbott and Costello type routines that friends do amongst one another. And at first I thought he was kidding, but I don't think that's the case. He was actually serious. I owed him like 200 dinars. Apparently, apparently I'm a deadbeat, so <laughs> I guess we'll move on out. We paid our debt though, so we're not that deadbeaty. Let's go take a look at Virtue. Maybe you can't suggest a course of action until they're done at their castle. Let's go talk to Ragnar one more time now that he's out in the field. Interesting. Well, I don't know why it won't allow me to suggest a course of action at the moment. But I guess I'll keep my head down and we'll just kind of keep an eye on the enemies that are around. So in this episode, since it's not allowing me to direct anybody anywhere... I think what our realistic plan should be, he's got 19 sergeants right there, I bet I could take him. I bet I could siege this place, so let's upgrade all of them to slaver chiefs and things of that nature. Five camp defenders, so now we're up to six camp defenders, which is pretty sweet. We've also got some Rodok sharpshooters ready to go. And with Rolf over here, let's see, what did Rolf do? First aid and wound treatment, okay. So let's go ahead and get him going because those are both really, really useful skills that we want to make sure that we have capped out at any given time. And it looks as though his wound treatment is completely and totally done. So what I'll do is we'll start dropping points into first aid. And that means we're going to come back with 15% health if we get lost in combat. Or anybody else that gets lost in combat for that matter. So if it's Lazalit or anybody else, they'll pop back in at 15% health. Which will be really, really nice considering it'll allow you to do back-to-back -back battles with some of your retinue ready to roll. Now then, with Nizar, we were trying to work him up, I believe to 12 agility so that we could give him riding four and then give him a real horse a horse that's ready to go unfortunately he's not quite there yet so let's think about giving him anything else that might be supplementary and useful although nothing here is looking really incredible it's not all looking golden at the moment so let's give him power draw maybe let's give him power throw we don't have anybody that could throw stuff and that's definitely we have a lack of things to be thrown here at the Nerd Castle, and I'd like to remedy that situation, so let's go ahead and do it. Now with his skill points, that means we should probably put some points into throwing so that he's a little bit better at it. So that he's not just like, eh, you know that limp arm throw that like, when you try and throw with your left hand, or when I try to throw anything in general, that kind of just like, eh. Like it's not really a real throw, it's just sort of like the imitation of a throw from watching other people throw. That's how he throws right now, and unfortunately it's given him, he's, he's earned himself a nickname among the remainder of the troops. One that is not so kind, and so we're hoping to banish that. We want to dispel that nickname so that he can be part of our force without feeling persecuted. Now then, I can't tell anybody where to go. Oh, I said I was going to invade Alberk, that's what it was. Let's jump up in here, and I think I'll attack Alberk now rather than later. 108 versus what do we have? 91? Let me do some Quixie style recruiting and we'll do some really really fast upgrading. I don't think that place is going to be able, I think I can upgrade faster than it can produce troops. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Okay, are we maxed out? 102, fantastic. 
we'll make ourselves some quickie mode huskarls. Which quickie mode huskarls, they're just huskarls of loose moral. That's really, they're just of loose moral fabric. That's the only difference between a normal huskarl and a huskarl with the quickie adjective in front. We can take out Rymusk. I should probably start beating up lords over here too. Just to make sure that the remainder of our campaign goes well and sits in our favor. I'm going to upgrade them all to footmen. I may make a couple of archers just because I don't have time to run off anywhere else. But for the time being, we're just going to stick with melee troops since that seems to be a pretty good counteracting factor to Swadian Knights anyways. He's got a bunch of troops up there. Oh, there's a 60 right there. Let's go ahead and there's a 60 and a 52. That one's a Rodok. That one's Dundush, which is just a bunch of Lancers. So let's go ahead and run him down first. And we'll just start picking on them one by one. I don't think I'm going to set up... He didn't appear to have any really elite units. So I'm going to wait until we get to the top of this hill and I'll administer some orders if indeed it's necessary. But for now, I'm going to set everybody to follow. We're going to take this center hill. And if I come over this and there's like 400 arrows waiting for me, if this is just the hill of arrowing, I'm going to be very, very deeply upset. Rather than just liminally upset. Okay, so what I had feared has happened. So what we shall do is we'll tell our infantry to charge. We'll have our archers take that right there. And then with our cavalry. Oof, that sounded painful. We're going to send our cavalry in right now since apparently they're already within firing range anyway. So we're just going to make do with a bad situation and hope that they all miss as we charge in against them. And they didn't. They got Nizar. That's okay, though. I don't like Nizar that much anyways. He's a jerk, and he never pays for drinks. When we go to the pub, it's always me, 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 me. In fact, Artemenor, surprisingly enough, tends to be the guy that's always buying beer. So, good guy, Artemenor, we're going to make a meme about you. Stop shooting my horse, you asshole. You're deeply, deeply making me miserable. Because I like my horse. I don't want him punctured. He doesn't need any extra holes. My horse already has plenty of holes for all of his uses. Like, there's, I hate to tell it to you, but most biological structures come with exactly the amount of holes that they need. And extra or minus holes are typically a very, very bad thing. Like, there's no positive way for that to work out. Down he goes, getting a couple of kills in. I've noticed we haven't been leveling up in a really, really long time, and I think we may have finally hit that boundary where we're no longer feasibly going to be leveling anymore. Archers, do your job. Shoot him in the face or in the back. We don't have to be honorable. Hey, how dare you outride me on my own battlefield? That's like outdoing me on my own comedy special. What are you doing? That's not all right. You're not Jim Carrey. You can't do this. I cannot be upstaged in this manner. Now then, we lost a slaver chief. Don't care. Lost a crusher. Don't care. So everything we lost there, I 100% don't care about. We're not even going to go to their funerals because we're a jerk like that. Now then. I was going to call him a dick bag, but then I started thinking about it and... I've noticed that people get called dicks or they get called dick bags, but really what is the distinguishing factor between a dick and a dick bag? Like, is it worse to be the dick or is it worse to be the bag that holds it? Like, really, the recept is the receptacle of unsuitable quality as well? I, I don't know. I can't decide which insult to go with in that case. It's one of those two defining features that I'm just, I don't know. Mercenary horsemen here. We'll hire all three of them because we have the money to do so. And then we're going to run upstairs. What was I doing here? Oh, yeah. I had to go to the market to buy food. I'm one of those people that I constantly forget what I'm doing because I'm using up all of my spare oxygen talking. Like, your brain requires a certain amount of oxygen in order to continue functioning. And unfortunately for me, it's just like my mouth absolutely 100% uses it all up. There's not a whole lot of extra ancillary oxygen left over for later uses. So it's kind of like powering down secondary shields, to be honest. So now that my brain has been fully powered down, we'll still receive some money. We've got a little bit of extra food just to get us by while we ride out on our enemies. And much like Tupac when goaded by the Fugees and Mob Deep, we will definitely ride out. And let's see here. They've got 20. Yeah, let's go wipe out Mary here really quickly. Unless he's going to be hiding up in his castle like a weenie. He is indeed hiding. Let's go ahead and handle anybody we can catch then. It's kind of one of those weird fishermanly situations where I make up a word like fishermanly and then talk about how difficult it is to catch anybody with this big force that I'm riding around with. I'm going to circle around him. And let's get Rymusk. He's going to make it to Kieran though. Damn it, you guys are such cowards. Come out and fight me. Oh, Kieran's ready to go. Well, maybe I should do that. What do they have stationed there? 25 sharpshooters? 
and a lot of how do they have like a huge force of Rodok sharpshooters here you go die so we've ran down Rymusk and what we want to do with Rymusk is remember to upgrade my troops damn it I forgot to upgrade my troops well our plan with Rymusk here is to kill him so that we can go back and take Kirin and after we take Kirin we will ask that it is given to us no not everyone charge everyone hang out on the hill as always there you are And I don't know if they have a lot of archers or anything. I think last I saw, he was all footmen. So he's going to get a couple of free crossbow shots off. But they're kind of cross-eyed tier 2 units. They're just like, Aah! they don't really know what they're doing with their crossbows. Let's go ahead and give the charge order for everybody. We will sound the charge. And the second we break with their lines, I think I'm just going to jump in there and start swatting at enemies left and right. Oh, he does have some infantry. Okay, so he's not... Amazingly well stocked, but this is a higher tier grouping of enemies that I had expected, so. We'll probably take some casualties in here. Looks like they're already routing. Let me go help this guy over here. Feel as though he may be in a little bit of trouble. Another casualty taken, and we've got him riding there. I believe he's probably going to flee the field. Or he's going to block my attack and try and hit me with an enormous, terrifying axe. Count Rymusk. He was swinging that with one arm, too. He must have been getting the extra exercise lately. The mysterious stranger has been visiting frequently. Therefore, he has extra arm strength. Now then. He's been taken care of. Let's go ahead and make our captures. And my hope is that he depleted some of the elite units from that location. We'll go back and look in just a moment and find out. Kieran Castle has 65 men, 25 of which are sharpshooters. I think we can take it so long as it's not one of those ridiculous battles where you sit around just praying that the siege engine doesn't screw you. Let's go ahead and convert everybody over to what they're going to be in the future. So we've got Sword Sisters, Fantastic, Artemenor. What are you ready to do? Artemenor is our Engineer Surgery Tactics guy, so let's go ahead and increase his Surgery skill. 19 right there. His Surgery is maxed out. So let's go with Tactics is also maxed out. Well, we'll go with Engineering then, so that we can invade a little bit quicker. And we'll give him Riding 3, so that we can upgrade his Horsemanship. There we go, great. I think I was going to get him some Crossbow Bolts at some point. Oh, never mind, he already has them. Good. Well then, let's keep an eye on this bridge, and make sure that there's nobody sitting over here just waiting on us. Maybe talk him into going to Kirin. And he says that he's grumpy with us too. Why is everybody grumpy with me right now? Did I get knocked out in a battle or something? Well, nobody allowed me to suggest courses of action, so maybe there's like a hard cap on how much you can suggest action to other people to keep you from steamrolling the entire map. It'd be an interesting situation indeed. Looks like we're still holding Proven. We need to make some ground right here, though. The fact that I can't recommend what we do is really sort of a letdown, because I do feel like if I was given the Marshall ship, I could take Vercheg, I could take Tyr, I could definitely take Suno, and we could pretty much push Swati off the map right now, which would put us in a really good position for fighting with Vagirs. Beyond that, once we had taken that amount of the map, if they gave me the Marshall ship, I'm pretty sure we could sweep just about everything before the enemy would notice. Unfortunately, not going to be the case. Let's go ahead and give ourselves another sharpshooter, and I'm going to save my game, just in case, because I never know how these things are going to go. It's going to be 65 versus about 100 and something. And let's besiege it. Let's go ahead and build... Oh, it's a siege tower. Never mind then. Siege tower is going to allow us to sit there, and we're just going to... We could take it, but the losses are going to be too great, and I just don't care. So then, if I have to build a siege tower, it automatically kind of discourages me from taking that action because I really, really hate the siege tower sieges. They suck. They suck and they're boring. Way too much time sitting around waiting for that siege tower to get into position. Let's ride down these guys. Can I make it? I just did something stupid, didn't I? Who joined? Tysa and Kerneas. There's Bracha. There's Kerneas. 42. Tysa. Okay, I think we'll probably be okay. And we'll just whack all these guys at the same time. 100 versus 127. It'll be okay, though. 
since they've got the numbers, that means they're probably going to come to me. Let's set up on a hill to eliminate any cumulative advantage they might have from their archers. We're just going to have the infantry stand closer. Cavalry needs to be... What are you doing? Cavalry, follow me. There we go. i got to get everybody situated. I hate it. Sometimes in this game, I push the wrong buttons because my fingers are feeling particularly rebellious. They've got their own little insignias. They start wearing these little red bandanas, and they're just like, Meow! And it's really sort of upsetting. Like, having your own little vestiges of your own body kind of rebel against you, it blows. It's definitely a disappointing feature of life. And so once they put on those little bandanas, I've got to whip them back into shape. I've got tiny whips, and I smack my fingers with them until they are bloodied and beaten and raw. And if they don't ride out on me, I'm going to be really disappointed with the enemy. Because the last eight battles... It's been like, how about we fight on a real battlefield instead of me coming to you? This is turning into just a ridiculous Rome Total War type situation where the enemy has no balls whatsoever. They feel no need to attack me. They just hang out in their little corner. Maybe they're coming from that direction, and that's why I can't see them. Yes? Enemy troops! Looks like we're firing at something, so I'm going to assume that my insults against my enemy's testicles are unfounded. There's always that wanton chance that when you insult someone's testicles, they'll just rip them out and be like, these nuts. At which point you'll be like, oh my god, this is not an engagement to which I was ready to throw myself. Just not ready for this today. Just not in the mood. Not in the mood, not in the situation, not at the place where this can happen right now. Let's go ahead and give them the flanky spanky right now. So cavalry, it's all you. Infantry will stay where they are. And they will skirmish to their heart's content. And their heart's content, their hearts are capable of holding a lot of content, believe me. It's like a 10 year old MMO at this point, just content everywhere. So filling their heart's content with murder is going to be an endeavor that will take them quite some time. Now then, we've begun to lose some troops. Let's send in the infantry to back up the cavalry now that they've been waylaid. And I shall not be, oh, just took a vulge right to the side of the head there. And so I'm going to back off for a minute, and I think I'm going to command from the back from here on out. Just to make sure, because you see that little guy right there? He's shooting stuff at me. That guy was hoping to kill his horse with sort of a sideways stab. There it is. So I got his horse out of the way so that I'm no longer being chased. I will kill off a few of these guys on the side flanks. And I'm not really sure why we're losing so many troops right now. I didn't feel like that was an elite force that we were fighting. I feel like Swati is pretty tapped out. I feel as though they've probably... And I'm feeling a lot of things right now, which is why I said that like nine times in a row. But it's beginning to look to me like Swati is tapped out. Nothing in this engagement has had knights or anything top tier. I'm starting to think that maybe their fight with Rodox didn't go so well for them. And they're basically fighting us with those last couple units that they have available rather than anything that's truly threatening. In fact, it almost appears as though they're fighting us with banditos and things. And so there comes their next invasion of troops. The nice thing here is I'm not going to have to redeploy to any other formations because we're going to lump up on these guys right here. And this should go without issue, I think. I'm going to get that guy right there because he's shooting arrows at me. There we go. So he's now no longer an issue. We're gonna kill that guy. Wow, he took a hard hit and it only did 19 damage. I'm surprised. Then again, he is fairly well armored, so who even knows? A few more arrows coming from the backfield there, so this fight might be a little bit more extended than I was willing to wager before, but we'll stick with it. We'll continue slashing away and destroying our enemies indiscriminately. We are losing Huskarls, which is bad. I mean, we need those to maintain our sanity throughout the remainder of this campaign and to remain in a state of efficacy. Effica efficiency, I guess. Efficacy. There we go. That's the word that I wanted. That is the word that just simply would not protrude. Like, it was sort of prairie dogging. It was turtle heading a little bit. But I just couldn't get the whole thing there. And so I just had to do the pinch and squinch. I had to do a verbal pinch and squinch in order to make it work. These Rodox sharpshooters are so ridiculously overpowered. Like, one of those units that desperately needs a nerf. They are just too good for what they are. And people will say, oh, but Rodox sucked at release. Oh, they were so weak. Yeah, well, in typical fashion, the devs have definitely patched them 
into a state where if the only enemy I fear, like you can have 50 knights and I won't care. You can have 50 guards, I won't care. You can have 50 Huskarls, I probably won't care. But the fact of the matter is if I, if I see 50 sharpshooters, I automatically am just like, well, we're gonna take insane losses in this battle. And because we took so many losses right there, I'm gonna take prisoners. Because I've gotta make money, obviously. We lost 17 men, so I've gotta make money to replace the fact that we lost troops. So, I don't really know how it is. I wish everybody would go back to their normal factions and keep it pure, but unfortunately everybody in this game is a bunch of sellouts. And so we've wiped out a bunch of lords right there, and the rest of them are just huddling inside their castle, praying that nothing terrible happens to them. Those guys are all riding out as though it's gonna have... I talked to a five... That kind of scared me there for a second. I'm gonna be honest, my heart jumped. We're gonna sell back that lord, and it appears as though they're gonna go after... Sargoth, maybe? I don't know what they're going after right now, but it's probably not gonna work. Because that is not a battle force that inspires confidence. That's a that's a meager skeleton force, I guess. If that's the best thing they can come up with, then I think the remainder of this campaign is going to be firmly on our side of the battlefield. I don't see the enemy scoring a lot of goals here. What are they trying to take? Ismarala, maybe? Or are they sieging anything at all? Who exactly are they at war with? Let's go ahead and take a look at our notes for a moment. And what I want to do, in the process of looking at my notes is figure out what Swati is doing at the moment. If they're fighting with like eight factions, then it would make sense that they're not really dedicating to us. Oh, they're at war with Rodox too, so it makes sense that they're so tapped out then. They're not really in a position to be making any offensive gambits. Recruit a few more volunteers here. Puts me back up to 104. There's a few more trained footmen to kind of round out our force because it's looking a little square at the moment. And I prefer the edges to be rounded so that when you fall down and hit your head on them like a jackass, which I do, I fall down constantly. And so my concern is that when you've got sharp edges that I'll fall down and I will wound myself permanently. And then I'll no longer be able to construct humorous diatribes for all of you. And so I feel like if I hit my head on like a round surface, I'll at least be able to make bad jokes still. Over here we've got skirmishers, footmen, recruits. Yeah, we're going to be running them down. What are they all doing over here? They're just hanging out around the castle. This is like the cool place to be. It's the under the bridge of their 8th grade, grade class. Alright, well... I guess we could jump in here and get a little bit of fun. Actually, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave right now because I don't feel like that's a good idea. So are they actually... What are they doing with this castle? They're just guarding it? Alright, well, we'll do one more battle. So we've got 93 versus their 86, and I don't see this going... Oh, we get 11 renown for the battle, which will be nice. Let's put everybody on follow, and after this battle, we'll break off the episode. But for now, the episode shall remain unbroken. It will be like the circle. The proverbial circle that they're always singing about in Bioshock Infinite. And also church services. They used to sing that song all the time at my parents' church when I was growing up. But anyways, that's beside the point. Let's go ahead and have everybody follow us. Our Sword Sisters are ready to roll. And the weird thing about Sword Sisters, I do want to point this out, is that Sword Sisters, by my recollection, were always a group of units that did not have horses when I remember having them. And now they all have horses, and I'm not really sure why. Alright, archers, pull back. You guys are in a bad spot to be. Let's put you right there, maybe. And then we'll have infantry take that spot right there, possibly. We'll take our cavalry, and we'll go around the other side of this hill... Assuming we're not cresting the side of the zone here. Okay, so let's go ahead and have cavalry do their thing. So there you go, guys. Jump in, do your game, have your fun. Shoot your shot, whatever metaphor you want to use. I'm going to start stabbing this guy because he doesn't please me. I've asked him repeatedly and he just refuses to do it. And so, you know, Mad Dog McGriddle, she's not a woman that asks twice. She just doesn't do it. She asks once, and if you don't give her what she wants, well, then the situation's probably about to get very, very dire for you. Like a wolf left to level too long in a fantasy forest. Rapidly becoming dire. Now then. Ooh, how was that for a bad nerd joke? That right there had you quaffed in the potions of terribility, didn't it? Yep, I bet it did. That one was off in the corner field. Let's slash him in the face. This guy right here? I don't like his tabard. I'm coming up with excuses to hit everybody. This guy over here on the horse? Don't like his mustache. Like, oh, I don't have a mustache. Well, 
I don't know, my lord. Where's my moustache? My moustache. That guy's in the middle of my archers, and that's a position that I don't want their horsemen at all. So I'm going to get in here and create a little distraction to save my men. Because if I start losing camp defenders and sword sisters, which have already happened, but if I start losing some of my high tier archers that are going to make me march back down into Rodok territory, just to replenish myself, I'm going to find just many swear words coming to mind. Just lots of things being conjured in the process. Okay, so they managed to hold off the enemy there. Unfortunately, we got flanked. I wasn't expecting that. I never gave the infantry the charge order. That would explain why I got flanked. I was doing all of my business with just cavalry. And while impressive, I mean, I'm definitely going to hand out the commendations to my cavalry after all this. It's probably not the wisest strategic decision to make. This is why I lose at Stratego. This is why I lose. Now then. Speaking of which, if anyone just... If anyone ever asks you to play chess out of the blue, the correct answer is no, by the way. I've noticed a distinct trend among my friends that play chess, where they won't tell you they play chess, and then you will play them in chess, and you will find out that they're like a third degree chess master for like the last decade. And you'll be like, oh my god, and they just make you look foolish. They get you with like ridiculous defenses that basically only noobs fall for. And I'm a noob at chess, I'm terrible at it, I'm terrible at all games. I will freely admit that all games are things that I am not good at. But, in the case of chess, every now and again I'll indulge a friend or like a random acquaintance be like, Hey, you wanna play some chess? And just, just say, say no. Save yourself the intellectual damage. Like, save your ego from the rapid puncturing that's incoming. And while I don't think chess is an indicator of kind of raw intellect, at the same time, it is a, it is a game that smart people play. And so, you know, when you lose at a game that smart people play, it definitely has that nasty inferment that you may not be smart. Let's kill off this enemy here. Or at least you may not be as smart as your opponent. Now then. I'll say this because I was invited to play chess against one of my professors and it turns out he and his wife are both like grandmasters something rathers. And it did not turn out well for me. It was like a two way of pain. Like I was the... I was the hamburger bun of pain and they were the buns on both sides of me and it was awful. Battle won. Now then. We captured Count Farm. We're gonna start taking prisoners. And I realize this goes against what I said earlier, and the reason we're doing this is because the enemy just has too many lords and we need to get them out of there. They're replenishing too rapidly. They are able to repopulate at a rate which frankly disgusts me. Now then, now we've captured them. The battle is over. I think I'm going to break off the episode right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for another magnanimous episode of Mountain Blade Warband. I will see you guys in the next episode where hopefully we will continue this campaign and try and get things done. I do want to take a look and see where my right to rule is at at the moment. How many Huskarls? We lost like seven Huskarls right there. We replaced a few of them though, but in any case, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody, and farewell.